welcome back to the channel today we're going to go just a little bit more in depth with this 1964 AMC Rambler we'll give it a look in through the bifocals this time in our last video if you watched it we just kind of showed us kind of maneuvering our way through the the back roads if you haven't seen it it's only two minutes long you're welcome to go look at it when I go to look at a car usually the first place I head is underneath of it strangely enough I like to inspect the, the framework floorboards and it pretty much tells me if I'm done looking at the car and need to move on or or if it's something I'm further interested in without taking you all the way underneath I'll show you just a little bit of what I found when I looked at the car the type of framework there is hmm. this is just a briefing it kind of shows you that framework is super clean underneath so is the rest of the car but it's certainly not rust free there's a few spots on it but more or less instead of the condition of this particular car I'll put that in there just a little bit but I really wanted to talk just a little bit about the Rambler itself and if you're wondering who made Rambler you don't have to look much further than this right here American Motors Corporation you can't get much more patriotic than American Motors Company the next place I had is usually under the hood let's go ahead and have a look underneath this one Rambler did offer a, a few different motors for this car including a, a small V8 this one here it has a team of six in front of the carriage pulling it this right here would be a, a 196 L head engine it was in the Nash Ramblers as a flathead and when they went to overhead valves it was pretty simple they just swapped sides of the water pump ran some push rods and overhead and I'm probably making it sound way easier than the engineers had it but really it's the flathead block with a overhead valve system put on it it wasn't meant to go out and hot rod and race it had, didn't have that in mind at all when they built this they just was trying to get you across the the beautiful uh, land of our fruited plains your dipstick was inside your oil seal tube your oil filter was plenty easy to get at and speaking of this oil filter it basically just runs a, a small tube here and a, a little bigger tube and that's really how your oil filter works on this you got your your points and coil pretty handy your fuel pump is down there other than that there's not much here for for uh, complication to look at a lot of people talk about the stroke of an engine and this team of six they weren't race horses you wouldn't have entered them in a Kentucky Derby but they have a 4.3 stroke where these particular engines here got in trouble was you're supposed to retorque your head bolts about every 8,000 miles on this because this block was designed for a flathead and when they put the overhead valve on there the fluctuation just wasn't as as true as it needed to be and so they just tell you in the shop manual just retorque them and back then they didn't put 15 20 thousand miles a year on the car unless you were a traveling salesman they just put about you know five to seven thousand miles a year on so once a year it was a 15 minute job a couple of Phillips screwdrivers and retorque the head bolts and put it back on adjust your your uh, flat tap it rocker arms and on your solid lifters and uh, get the rocker set and you know it was a yearly tune-up you could take it to the garage or you could do it yourself at home but people didn't do that the head bolts work themselves loose they get a head gasket leak the head warps when it overheats and cracks and therefore they kind of got a bad rep for that do your preventative maintenance on it she'll take you across the fruited plains without issue one thing I'd like to point out is you see that holes going up to my wiper motor that's vacuum 
them wipers work off a vacuum. If you're at part throttle or, or idling, them wipers, they get up and dance. If you're pulling a hill and giving it a lot of gas, your wipers pretty near stop. I'm sure glad they make rain -X. Another unique thing you'll find about this engine is the intake is cast right into the head with just a plate on top. This particular car has a little bit of rust at the top of each cowl. Which it's not in a super harmful place or anything. So we'll deal with that. Now a really important part to me is a, on, a, on an old classic car is the dash. You'll look at the car for 10 seconds when you walk up to it. After that, you'll spend your next few hours looking out that over that hood and that dash. I like a unique dash, a good looking dash. Let's take a look at what we got going on on the inside of this. Now fellas, if under the hood didn't excite you much, this is where the fun will begin. First of all, let's talk about the transmission. This is what you call the Flash-O-Matic. And really, it works a lot like a Cruise-O-Matic in a Ford. You put it on drive two and it takes off in second and goes to third, or you can put it in drive one and it'll take off in first, then go to second and go to third, or you can lock her in low and be done at about 35 mile an hour. As you notice, right in here, we have the old weather eye. It sounds fancy and it was a selling, it was a, it was a selling ad. All that really meant is right in front of your face and easy to use was your controls. I mean, pretty hard to miss this indicator for low and high. Your lights, your temp, they're all pretty handy. If you notice, you don't have the good old locks up here that you pull and push like you would on most classic cars. Your locking mechanism was right here. Hear that click? It's locked. It's unlocked. Of all the unique things we found inside this car and the things that are pretty cool looking out over that dash was the original owner's manual in the glove box. And there's really only one page I want to show you in this owner's manual. You didn't find it in a Chevy Nova, and you wouldn't have found it in a Plymouth Valiant. See it? No, 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 no. Do you see it? Do you see that? Separate front cushion. See the reclining seats? That's right. It lays right into a bed. You just flip this lever, you can lay it right back, and when you're done, you can just bring it right back up to a seat again. How about that? So there you have it. Right in the owner's manual. This car was meant to be a bed. The rest area didn't have all your Wi-Fi and all the fancy stuff in 1964 that you get now. Now it's air conditioned and everything else in these modern rest areas. Back then, a rest area meant you had a pick, couple of picnic tables or you could have a lunch. You had some bathrooms that were made out of concrete. Smelt about like your city's lagoon. And if you were lucky, there might even be some toilet paper left on that roll. The Rambler guy, though, no matter where he went, he showed up well rested. There is a lot of talk about metal dashboards, but it's really hard to compete with a car that's got a metal back dashboard, especially when it's got about 1969 era speakers still mounted in the back. Rambler had something going with the roof. This is gonna be hard for any car manufacturer to compete with. If you look at the shape of this, isn't that amazing? This isn't like a cloth material that would tear. It's almost like a, a cardboard. This one here has manual steering, but you would never know it. This steer is about like today's rack and pinion steering. I can steer it with one hand. It also has manual brakes too. They stop even and smooth. The back of the car might be confused for a 
a Chevy Nova or something of that sort if you come up behind it. But it's all American Motor Company. But let me show you something else. If you didn't pay to get backup lights, you just got a piece of tin that looked like backup lights. So people didn't actually know you were cheap when they came up behind you until you put the car in reverse. Inside the trunk, somebody had rigged up a console to hold their beverage. It's still got the original floor mat in it. Looks to be in decent shape. The original spare is still with it. We got some upgrade ignition parts, it looks like. We have another fuel pump. And a set of spinner hubcaps if you don't like the R on the originals. All you Rambler guys, you're going to know more than me about Ramblers. I shared with you what I know. Don't go asking me a bunch of questions about AMCs or your Javelins. I, I don't know very much about AMCs at all. But I told you what I know about this model. I told you what I know about this particular car. So if you know a whole lot more than I do, you're welcome to share it right down below and punch it in on the keyboard and I'll read them. I'd appreciate that. If you're asking me what our plans are for it, I don't know. I'm sure we'll take it to the neighboring states and we'll cruise around in this car. We'll get hamburger and fries and milkshakes in it. I promise you that. I'm sure you'll see it again. Until next time, I hope you enjoyed it.